Uh, hi, Sion. This is a bit of a response to the one that you sent me. Uh, <laughs> with acting at the start of every single one, obviously. So it would be good if we can keep that going, like the back and forth. So we design this in video format, albeit compressed video formats. Um, so I've been thinking about what you said for a little while and what I'd sort of planned before. And I've decided to show you a few things and also talk about the things that you did. So let's have a look at the, the diagram. So this is my original drawing, as you'll recall, and you suggested putting lines on here, there, I oh know, there and there, uh, giving us a total of 13 segments. Uh, you'll notice that I've had my ears lowered as well today, so they're a lot lower down on my hairline. Um, so that I like that idea that we can then use more characters in the display. I think that's a good idea. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is the 74LS16, was it, that you said? Um, I've not used it before, so what I'm going to do is not pursue that. But I'm not saying you shouldn't. I think we should pursue slightly different paths and then join everything together at the end. So I'm going to still look at the 74HC595. Now that can only drive eight outputs, but we can chain two together. They're easily chainable, um, so you could just have two right next to each other. They only chain together with the clock and the data pin, I think. Um, so just two wires going between it, and then just have two on a board. So I'm going to look at it from that perspective, because I think the 74HC595s are cheaper than the 74LS16, mainly because I've never even seen a 74LS16. Um, but I'll wait to hear from you about it because I know that you've been uh, waiting on one to arrive. So it may be that that's super easy to drive. It might just be the same kind of shift out library that the Arduino uses for the 74HC595. I don't know, but we've got the option of using the 74HC595, which I've used loads in the past. So it's kind of a, I don't know. I know what its capabilities are. The higher current version would be much better mind. Anyway, um, we're going to have a look at the current requirements of the filaments today to give you a bit more information um, to make decisions about the design and stuff. Um, and we'll sort of figure out what the max current with all segments on would be given uh, a certain resistance on the filaments. We're also going to look at the forward voltage of those filaments, uh, which will be useful for anyone that wants to pick some up. And I'll put a link in the description, um, just in case anyone listening in to our one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, obviously, I know people are watching this and I've been reading the comments that people have left. I'm not going to interact directly with anyone else. It's just going to be me and Sion, but I do take on board anything that people have put in there about um, sort of chips that we could use or whatever, or ideas about how to drive stuff. But just going to be talking to the old unexpected maker on this one. So let's have a, a look on the bench and look at the filaments. So we've got our LED all set up here and to measure the forward voltage, all I need to do is measure the voltage across the LED. Now, as far as I know, this is a series of LEDs um, in parallel, maybe. Problem is I haven't taken one apart. I have broken one. Um, they're really, really uh, sort of delicate. The PCB sort of just snaps if you just sort of hold it between two fingers like that. So you need to be quite careful. So let's, um, this is the warm white one. So let's throw on our probes onto these wires. I'm not too worried about the resistance in these wires. They're pretty uh, thick copper, so they'll probably be okay. Um, we'll measure it directly in a second. So that says 2.0. 66 six or 2.65 so let's say it's 2.65 forward voltage and we'll have a quick test on the actual probes right next to it 2.65 yeah so we can accurately measure from the other points and that's fine so let's have a look at the cool white cool white one <laughs> that's a bit of a family guy reference if anyone watches it cool whip there we go oops
there we are so that's the cool white now there's a lot of difference visually to my eyes but to you it might not seem very different and that has a forward voltage of basically the same okay so it might be just the covering that makes them look different rather than the leds being different at all so this uh, sort of silicon phosphor might just be different and it's nothing to do with the leds themselves now as in terms of current um we've got a 470 ohm resistor in there that's my resistor of choice for leds essentially i always use a 470 ohm resistor it means they don't pull a lot of current and in a lot of cases you can get down to one milliamp with loads of leds so for example let's have a look how much this is drawing this is fairly bright i'm sure you'll agree so let's change my probes around. Into the milliamps range, um, which is going to have some um, voltage loss, but I will bump up the power supply to the amount that I think it is, which is about 0.2 volts. Turn it back on. And now I'm just going to short out over here, I think. So let's take that out. One probe in my crop clip and then one probe on the resistor. Now I get a reading of 5.3 milliamps. So that's pretty good. So we can actually do a calculation. Um, I'm going to have to go away and look up how to do it because Ohm's law and any kind of mathematics confuses me. So back in a second. So see on, you'll probably be well ahead of me by now, but um, this is mainly for my own sake. So uh, Ohm's law says that I is current. We're using a brown fountain pen today. I equals uh, voltage over resistance so that's current equals voltage divided by resistance so we know that voltage for both of those leds was 2.65 volts and then we need to divide that by what was it 470 ohms I imagine that's an ohm symbol um calculator so uh turn you on don't know if you can see that it's pretty weird this calculator so it's uh 2.65 divided by 470 equals 0 0.0056 so that's what that's right isn't it yeah so that's milliamps so that's uh 5.63 milliamps that's basically what uh what i thought it was or what we read it as so actually that's going to be uh let's write it in shall we 0 0.00563 milliamps oh no it's gone off the page there you go <laughs> so that's our reading and that's going to be the reading for the other led as well so we know that they both have the same forward voltage they're both going through the same resistor and we expect them just to have exactly the same reading. So let's test it out just to make sure. 5.1, so it's reading a little bit higher. So maybe there's a slight discrepancy in when I was reading that, uh, that uh, voltage, forward voltage of this particular one. But they both seem to be exactly the same really, don't they? So we were looking at 5.6, this one's 5.2. So pretty good so I think that's acceptable brightness um, in fact it's probably a little bit too bright if you wanted something a little dimmer perhaps um, a little more understated so you might want to go with something lower should we find another one yeah let's find another one so I'm going to do a 1k resistor now which should give us um, 2.65 divided by 1000 which uh, will be 2.65 milliamps. So roughly half. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stick a 1K in there and we'll see how bright it is. 
and that's that's actually about the brightness I would expect to see it. Uh, so let me dim the camera down so it gets to the point where my eyes match what you're seeing. So if I just increase the frame rate, that's about what I see in terms of brightness. So that's how it looks. It's, it's even of evenness of illumination. So it's fairly good actually. And that's uh, 2.5 milliamps, as you might be able to read there. So the calculation worked. That bloody Ohm's law dude is clever. Uh, okay, so that is that. So Sion, I'll wait till you've got the 74LS16, uh, was it, I think. Um, and I'm going to breadboard up something with a 74HC595 um, with a few of these. I think the 74HC595 will run them as they are. I don't think it will need any um, transistors attached. I don't think we'll need the higher power version. So if we've got, um, I think the maximum for a 74HC595 is 70 milliamps um, and you can only have, I'm gonna check. So that was slightly wrong-ish. Uh, I've just looked it up and although it is 70 milliamps for the whole chip, um, you are limited per pin. And I, I knew that, but I thought it was something like 20 milliamps. It's not. Um, it's it's 20 milliamps for a short period of time, I think. So uh, although I think 2.5 milliamps across all of the eight outputs is actually fine, I think we should probably investigate that a bit further. So I'll breadboard that, test it up see if anything smokes or gets hot because that's something I don't want to happen. I'd like it to run within, well within its limits would be wonderful. So maybe the higher current version is more appropriate or maybe the, um, what is it, 74LS16 would be better. I'm not sure. Uh, let's sort of think it out. But I do love the the idea of having those, um, those extra segments in there, the 13 segments. I think that's cool. Um, and it will make it a bit more useful, I think, for things. Now, in terms of the circuitry on that, that is a little tough, isn't it? So let's have a little look. Actually, we'll go back onto the bench and we'll have a look at that. So this is my original sketch and um, you changed it. So it had an extra segment there, an extra segment there, one there, one there, one there, and one there which basically crapped all over my circuitry in the middle. Now, that's not necessarily a problem. Um, going back to the comments on that video, someone mentioned that you could just extend this down and have like, it's like a riser board, isn't it? So here you could have your your ICs. And I think that's, that's a good idea. This is my lazily drawing in the pins. Um, I think that's a nice idea. It would give you somewhere to mount holes here on the bottom or in some other fashion, maybe have actual legs on there. So you could have all of that there and even resistors could come up across here. We'd be packing the board out a bit, but I really like the idea of having cutouts. Um, I think it would be really nice to keep that sort of in there. So um, here's what I'm thinking so far. I'd like to still explore the 74HC595. Um, let's switch pen, shall we? Let's have green for a little bit. But I'd like to have two of those, um, potentially, uh, or the 74LS16 that you looked at, but again, I haven't got one of those yet. Um, and I'd like to run them at um, sort of a minimum of 470 ohms um, up to, I think, uh, 1K. And, and that, was at, uh, that was at 5 volts. Um, actually, well, um, let's write this down just so that people can see it. So those filaments, which I'll put in the link, um, I think they're the ones that you bought as well, Sion, but they have a uh, 2.65 volt 
uh, forward voltage, um, which is, that's like a normal LED. That's like totally normal. That's fine. It's nothing hard to deal with. Uh, so driving these isn't going to be very difficult. I think um, getting all of this stuff into into one board is going to be difficult, but that's got what's going to make it fun, I think. So uh, also, I mean, I don't know how to make it pretty. Look at that. It's just ugly. <laughs> So let's do this. I like it. I like this idea. I like the the lines and everything. It's like um, one of those VFD displays from like an old v v VCR or other. I can't even talk. See, I love it. Let's get started. So I will breadboard some stuff up, play about with a 748C595, see what it looks like, have a bit of fun with it. Um, and I might jump into Eagle and start looking at how to lay these things out. I might create a part actually, which would probably be useful for both of us, which has the right dimensions for these um, LEDs and also has the pad um, that can be on there. Because I think it will have, so with my idea, it would have, uh, what color is that? I want, let's use brown. So my idea would be that uh, these come out. So this is the, the LED there. And then at the bottom would just be a copper pad that the leg would solder onto. It could be on either side. It doesn't really matter. I mean, they could even go on one side at the top and then the bottom side could be over here so that you've got some space for routing if you wanted. So it could be on the, that other pad could be on the bottom side of the board. The thing with these um, filaments is the, the sort of leg that's on there is fairly bendable so you can bend it without breaking that PCB, which is nice. So you could bend it and put it underneath the board. Now, I'm not sure about whether I want to force people to do that if we're going to make it. So I'm not sure. So this is actually pretty difficult to plan, isn't it? With me not talking directly to you, but it's an experiment. This is how people used to do it when they wrote letters, maybe, except for this is a lot more visual and easy to understand, I guess. Um, I'm using a fountain pen, so it's kind of like writing a letter. Uh, yeah, so I'll play around with Eagle a little bit. I think you should too. And then we'll try and merge all our ideas together. But yeah, good job on the whole 13 segment. Unlucky number though, 13, isn't it? 